Listen, I, I, I don't have, I, I'll be honest with you. Let, let me just confess to you and to be honest with you. As a young Christian, I was one of them. I have learned it's wicked and it's sinful and that you need to get over it quickly. It will ruin you to have a bitter spirit where all you can do is sit around and criticize people because they don't do it the way you do it. It will ruin you. It will ruin you. There's a lot of new things that have come up that God has used that have never been there before. And this is one, one example. I want to cover some verses real quick like, and then we'll be done. Proverbs 18. Proverbs chapter number 18. Brethren, notice what they did that helped them prevent a catastrophe. It could have been bad, y'all. It was heading for a disaster. They talked. They went and gathered all the facts and began to talk to each other. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse number 13. It says, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Listen. When there is trouble that comes, you be careful about answering before you have all the facts. You gather all the facts. I am criticized sometimes about moving too slow. You need to do this. You need to do this. I move slow on purpose. I am trying to gather facts so I make a right judgment because I've made mistakes before trying to deal with it right away. Sometimes you need to just take it slow and easy, get all the facts, ask all the people involved, and try to make a good judgment before you go forward. He said, the spirit of man will sustain his infirmity, but his wound, uh, but a wounded spirit who can bear? The heart of the prudent uh, get, uh, getteth knowledge. The ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Look at verse 17. 13, 17 kind of go together. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. You know what the Bible just told you? You need to be careful about the first person that shows up. You know, there's people, and I had to learn this at work the hard way, there's people that show up and they try to get to the boss first because there are actually foolish men in this world that believe the first person that shows up instead of hearing the whole matter. You be careful in your life. The first person who shows up and addresses you about an issue is not always right. You need to search the matter out. You be careful in your judgment. So notice uh, verse 13, don't answer before you hear it and be careful about the people who show up the first. They're not always right. Sometimes they are right, but they're not always right. Let's look at this. Go to John. John chapter number 7. If you few verses and we'll be done. I won't keep you much longer. Just uh, probably two or three verses and we'll be done. There's a lot we can go to. I got 10 or 12 verses, but I think we've learned enough here. John chapter number 7. John chapter 7. Look at verse number 20. John 7, start at verse number 20. He says this, The people answered and said, Thou hast the devil... Who goeth about to kill thee? This is Jesus talking. They're talking to Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and you, mar you all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you uh, circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of, your, of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. But if a man on the Sabbath day uh, receives uh, circumcision, that, uh, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry at me because I... Uh, I made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath. You know what he did? He healed somebody on the Sabbath. These people got all upset. You're breaking the Sabbath. You're working on the Sabbath. And he says, hey, look, 
you guys circumcise somebody if he's born on, if it's the eighth day falls on the Sabbath, you work. You do the will of God on the Sabbath. But notice what he says to them, and it applies to all of us. Verse 24, if you don't have that thing memorized, and you don't have that thing marked in your, your scriptures, you need to. He says, judge not according to appearance. You know what one, uh, that those children of Israel did on this side of Jordan, the other side of Jordan? They judged according to appearance. He says, but judge righteous judgment. How do I judge righteous judgment? Number one, you gather all the facts. You hear both, hear both sides. There's dialogue. Number two, don't make assumptions until you the, hear the whole argument. Number three, you be careful because the people who come first aren't always the ones who are right. Number four, you make sure that your judgment is according to the Word of God. Because if you try to measure a situation outside the book, you're going to get in trouble. One last passage. I want to emphasize this in this church. There's several other places I'd like to go. Um, I just don't have time. Don't have time. Let's go to uh, Matthew 18. And I want to set a precedence in this church. Matthew 18. I, I want to emphasize this passage in this church. And I want you to see the order that the Lord Jesus Christ said that we must follow when judging a matter in the church. Now, brethren, please hear this. There's so many people I've seen. Listen, my own pastor, I loved him. I loved him. But there are times when he exposed something in front of everybody, and that book says that there's an order. It is much better if you can get somebody to repent in private and it don't spread to everybody else. And I loved him. I loved him. I, lo I still love him. He taught me the Bible, but He taught me enough Bible that I know that that's one thing I had to change in my life. Look at Matthew 18. Watch what it says here. Look at verse number 15. He says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell the whole congregation. Is that what it says? Why is it that people in a church, you want to destroy this church? You let this church get built up. You know how we can destroy it? By ignoring what Jesus says right here. We can sit around and nip at each other and talk to everybody else behind their back instead of actually going to the one that we got a problem with and resolving it. Notice what he says here. There, here is the order, brethren. Please apply this to your life and make sure you practice this in this church. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Him alone. Him alone. Do you see that? It's only two people. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take to thee one or two more, that in the mouth are two or three witnesses, every word may be established. You know what it says? If that brother's a knucklehead, he's in error, clearly in error. You go to him. He don't want to fix that problem that he's offended you over. You go and get two or three other brethren, or one or two other brethren, and you go there and address him from the Word of God about the issue. Now, if he don't hear that group, this is what it says then that's when it comes to this point right here. And if he will not hear thee, then thou shalt take two or three more, two or three more, and at the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. And if he neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. You go to him first, you go to her first, you then take a group. Listen, we're not talking about you know, they wore blue pants instead of green today that, and their blouse didn't match. And We're not talking about that. We're talking about a sin problem, a fault. 
And if he neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. Now watch, it gets more serious. And this is church discipline where it starts. This is where church discipline starts, right here. And if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Do you see that? That means at that point. Now, listen to me. I've been in church meetings where the brethren had gotten together and people stormed out of the meeting. You ever been in any of them? I've been in them myself. Listen, when we're dealing with a sin issue or a problem in somebody's life, Do you know that we can be 100% right in showing that person what the Bible says without being arrogant and full of pride? I take no joy in 1 Corinthians chapter number 5 when it gives us the view and the parameters of, of church discipline. It's not something that I, I rejoice in. I've seen brethren leave a church and say, well, that was really good. Yeah, they needed to do this to them. What is wrong with you? If you really love the church, when you leave through that door, if something has to be given, handed out and disciplined to somebody, we should be weeping. Our hearts should be broken. Nobody should be rejoicing. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help because you rest assured the day will come when we will try to help and we will have to counsel in such a way that this world is going to see it as harsh and we're not trying to be harsh. The best thing we can do is have the right spirit, love people, and if they don't want to get it right, at that point it has to be on their head. But as a church... There are certain things, 1 Corinthians 5, I encourage you to read it, that we have to hold our guns tightly to. We cannot let just anything come. Listen, listen. If we come up in here and there are men committing adultery with their wives and women committing adultery with their husbands and uh, men that think it's okay to be covetous and are... Uh, uh, begin uh, extorting from other people. Do you, how long do you think that this church is going to be a peaceful place to come? And that, listen, I'm telling you, I, I've told many people over the years, nobody is saying that you have to be at this church. There are thousands of churches that think exactly like you and they would have, love to have 10 more dollars in the offering plate. We want a church where the people love each other and are trying to please the Lord and are here for each other. Right? And it, it takes people with the courage to try to reach out and to also be obedient to the scriptures. It ain't, listen, it ain't always the easy road, y'all, but it's always right. Amen? Let's be careful in our judgment toward our brethren who don't do it the way we do it. Okay? Let's stand for prayer. <clears throat> Father, it was a good lesson today.